now that we've gone through the more technical aspects of lighting in terms of how to set up the lights, how to set up your sequence templates to be able to run several shots at the same time, we want to look at the more creative aspects of lighting. At this stage, we usually are in the world of shot specific lighting, where we enhance each shot to the point where we can get buy off for the final lighting. One aspect of beauty lighting and creative lighting is understanding the role of lighting for storytelling. If you understand what the story is, what the aesthetics of a scene is, and what the story behind the scene is, you are able to decide how to light your shot. The motivation of a shot can drive the motivation of your lights. A simple example, if you look at this image here, there is only one light source in the scene. So you wouldn't add random lights, but the main motivation of the lighting in the scene would be this one source. Knowing the motivation of your lights means the light can tell a story. To give an analogy, you wouldn't begin to animate a character without knowing what the character is trying to do. You wouldn't create a texture without knowing what type of mater material you are trying to create. The same thing holds true for lighting. It's also important to understand the emotional ambience or mood of a scene. Being able to identify the intended mood means you can make deliberate lighting choices to support the mood and story points. Sometimes this means not having much light in your scene, but rather use lights to create shapes or silhouettes. Besides aiding the mood of a scene, lighting can help focus the image. The visual goal is to direct the viewer's eye using light, making things read, producing interesting images. Lighting can aid with arranging objects in space, give them depth, or generally give, the, give depth to the image. Lighting should help to draw the viewer's eyes to the important parts of a scene. The viewer should be absorbed in your story and just watch the characters. Lighting should never be so conscious that it's seen, but it should just be felt and help create a mood, enhance the tones and help the emotional experience. What this means is you want lighting to feel natural. So it's important to look at qualities of lights like color temperature, brightness, softness, light pattern, light angle, direct and indirect lighting, and so on. These aspects need to match the type of lighting you are trying to recreate. I keep coming back to the same thing, analyzing and looking at your reference footage or reference examples. Imitating reality will help you create photorealistic and believable images. Knowing how cameras and lights work, the physics behind it will help you understand how to recreate the same in CG. Color theory in itself is a vast topic well beyond the scope of this course. Knowing the basics of color theory though will be very helpful. I won't go into too much detail as there is a lot of information online which you can look up. At minimum, look at terms like hue, saturation and value, as these are terms often used when talking about lighting. Hue can be also called color or tone or shade or tint. Saturation defines how colorful a color is or how saturated the color is. Value, sometimes also called brightness or lightness, defines how bright or dark the light is. The lower the value, the darker, the higher the value, the brighter the source. So these three things are good to remember and understand. Another aspect of color theory is Kelvin. You might often hear the term color temperature of a light. In lighting, there are two ways of defining your light color. One is to use RGB values. The RGB values can be derived from reference photography, but I wouldn't necessarily be able to tell you what the default color value of the sun would be. The other one is using Kelvin. Kelvin is something which is used on set or in real world lights. So when we talk about a light or a light fixture, we often talk about the color temperature or Kelvin of the light fixture. Just to give you an example, the sun, depending on a time of day and various other factors like air quality, clouds, and so on, can be anywhere between 4,900 
to 6,500 Kelvin. A light fixture, like a tungsten light source, is usually about 2,800 Kelvin to 3,200 Kelvin. Candlelight is even warmer at about 1,800 Kelvin. All of these aspects you want to look at when you beauty light your shots. This goes beyond technical lighting, where the goal is to match the lighting on set as close as possible. Simply put, what can you do to enhance the image? Now in this course, we are mainly looking at characters. A few examples of what you can do to enhance your character. Eye lights. Eye lights are often used on set to ping the eyes of the actors, to make them more readable. These can be small lights mounted on top of a camera. Eyes are important when capturing the emotions of your character. If you need to accentuate or separate your character from the background, you can use rim lights to help with the separation and make them stand out more. Kick lights can be used to accentuate cheekbones, edges or hair, which in turn accentuates facial expressions and emotions. Bounce cards are used for filling in characters to just give them enough information on the shadow side to make them readable. On the opposite side, Gobos, shadow casters, Cucoloris are tools to break up lights and create interesting patterns and modulate lights, often making the lights feel more realistic. All of the mentioned techniques are used on set, but valid for you to use in 3D as well. In fact, using similar techniques means you stay close to what the viewer is used to seeing, and in return the viewer will be more willing to accept the CG as part of reality. Okay, now let's take a look at beauty lighting for HDB30 and HDB10.